Welcome to AWS She Builds Tech Skills with your hosts, Maya and May. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to AWS She Builds Tech Skills. Uh, my name is May Jor, and I'm a solutions architect from Amazon Web Services. And today we have got a special host, Jyothi. Hello, everyone. I'm Jyothi, and I am a solution architect at AWS based out of New Zealand. And I'm very happy to uh, join me today and uh, share with you something that's close to my heart. Um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll go into the introductions soon. That is amazing. Welcome, Jyothi, and welcome, everyone. Um, Jyothi, based out of New Zealand, I am based out of Sydney, Australia. So I can see a few of you on the on the audience on online. So let us know where you're joining from. Are you are you a, are you a team New Zealand or are you a team Australia or are you somewhere out of I don't know on the other side of the wall in the horizon? <laughs> let us know where you're joining from. Um, we can see a few people from uh, USA. Welcome, Team USA. That's okay, Team USA. <laughs> um, I I think it is pretty late in um, in the in America or in other side. Yes. Yeah. Let us know. Um, Portland, Oregon, welcome to the show. If this is your first time, uh, welcome to AWS She Builds Tech Skills. This is our episode three, season two. And our whole theme is around focusing on, you know, developer toolings, DevOps, um, how how we can help developers to accelerate in their in their software development. And uh, today we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, monitoring and observability. But before we go into that, Jodi, what has been happening in New Zealand? Um, well, last week we ran a game day. So I love game days because I learn best by being hands-on. Um, and so we had a game day which focused on raising uh, cost awareness earlier in the software development life cycle. I so the frugality that. best game day. Yes, I do love them. I really do because I really learn by doing. And it's also a competitive game. So it's like both of the favorite things that get me going. Uh, so yeah, I think those two together, amazing. Uh, so that's one that we ran last week, uh, had really good traction. Um, and coming up, we have Cloud Day as well, which is uh, end of July. So very soon we'll be having Cloud Day. So we're all buzzing with the prep for Cloud Day uh, on the 31st of July. Uh, and there's the registration link. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't have too many people from New Zealand on the call, but if you are in New Zealand, uh, do register for uh, Cloud Day on 31st of, um, oh, there's somebody from Earth. Yes, hello. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. I put in the chat link, um, Cloud Day Auckland, if you are in New Zealand, please go and check out Cloud Day uh, Auckland. I can see a lot of people joining from you know, Texas, Chile, welcome, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, we have a question, uh, we will get to that, why I prefer Dynatrace over CloudWatch. Well, we have got a experts on the call, on the stream, so we will get to that in a minute, so hand tight for that. Um, before we go into that, I also wanna uh, give a shout out to another amazing program that is running uh, from the AWS, so this is a I guess a, a free um, mentorship programs uh, from She Builds Tech Skill. Uh, she Builds Tech Skill. She, she Builds Mentorship. Um, so if you're uh, if you're anywhere in Latin, EMEA, or APJ region, and if you have colleagues or friends uh, or family members uh, who are who identify as women who are looking to get into technology, changing a job, re-entering a job um, to the industry, whatever the case might be. This program is to create a community between the mentor and mentee to help to accelerate that journey. It's a 12 weeks funded program from AWS and I pop the link, I'm gonna pop it up here as well. So you can go and check it out. Um, if anyone's that you know might benefit from it, uh, please share with them. Uh, registrations are opened uh, until later this month. So please make sure you take this opportunity before the registration close off. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for women who would like to, you know, increase their skills, uh, soft skills, or even just understand how to navigate their career path better uh, by connecting them Absolutely. with uh, skilled mentors. So yeah, do uh, 
do register and do share with others who can benefit anyone who's probably trying to look to get back into the workforce. It's, 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 it's genuinely uh, to he- meant to help and it does help. It was started out in, the, in America and now because there was so much uptake, it's been shared across uh, the globe now. So uh, we take uh, advantage because I can see there's something from the earth. So it's, it's available in most countries on earth. So we take advantage of it. Absolutely. Awesome. So, um, all right. Speaking of the topic of today's, uh, Jodi, would you like to introduce our special guest? Yeah, so we have... Um, uh, we have been there who's a site reliability engineer from one new zealand uh, i uh, met Bindia uh, very interestingly while i organized observability day in auckland last year and observability is a passion project for me i feel strongly about it i really feel uh, like the value of observability i feel is often lost um, and so i uh, uh, ran this and i ran i met um, Bindia at this event um, and well, it, it was it was um, very um, you know very pleasant. She's very soft spoken, and she was like, "Yeah, if you want me to collaborate, I'll be willing to collaborate." And so, yes, when yes, the opportunity yes. came up today, I was like, "Yeah, can, can would you like to uh, join me uh, in the uh, yeah in uh, collaborating?" And uh, here she is. Uh, hey, Bindya, nice to meet you. Hey, Jyoti. Hey, me. How are you welcome, doing today? Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, I'm good. I'm actually I'm not feeling very well, but yeah, that's cool. <laughs> but it's it's a great opportunity for me to uh, work, uh, collaborate with uh, with you on this particular session. So it's, it's also, yeah, as you said, it's also close to my heart, like observability too. Yes, and we're very, we're, 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 I'm very glad, glad and grateful to you that you were able to make it. And I hope you're you're not not feeling too bad. Uh, and yeah. uh, you know, it, uh, I can understand, but uh, thank you so much for doing this despite being sick. Um, That's okay. Yeah, thank you. Cool. So, Bindya, do you? Uh, I can see that uh, May has put a question. The, does anyone want to? You know, please do let us know uh, how keen you are to listen in on observability. Um, so, Bindya, do you? Before we get into it, actually, with observability, we're still probably just going to get Bindya warmed up a bit. So, Bindya, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I, uh, I'm Bindya. I'm currently working as site reliability engineer at One Dot New Zealand. One New Zealand. So uh, actually, I'm quite new to this country, and I moved uh, to the country just uh, like one and a half year back. Uh, and previous to the prior to that, I was working in India as a platform engineer, and I started my career as a Linux system administrator. So um, and I that that's that's the that's a short about my like about me and yeah. Right, cool. And uh, can you tell me a little bit more about your role as an SRE? Like, what do you do? What does an SRE do? Oh uh, yeah, uh, SRE. Am I, I I think it's it's a new term to most of the people uh, around here. Uh, and what SRE does is like, it's actually very from industry to industry industry and organization what my day to day job is like being a te- big telecom company in new zealand it actually has uh, many legacy systems and many can like from most modern system to the legacy systems we have lots of applications here and what our team is focusing on is to ensure the customer journey how it looks and what's the customer journey will look like and what's the customer experience would look like and we are actually trying to build uh, the customer experience journey and how we can improve that observability and how we can improve a customer experience using different observability tools and how we can actually change the mindset of people who are working in a traditional model and bring them into agile or new DevOps things. So that's something which we are trying to build or we are trying to do. That it's like this is what we does in our newsland. But for SRE, it's it's like uh, they are actually practicing what the DevOps does. Does like uh, this. This is like a, a very close role even though their responsibilities might be different. But it's quite similar role. Yeah, and I'm excited because as a, as a 
user of One New Zealand. I am a customer of One New Zealand. I'm excited to hear that because it means I'm going to get the benefits of everything that you do. So I'm excited. Um, so with that, we'll probably get started. Yeah, any sorry in the audience, let us know. That would be amazing to know. Um, and yeah, Noob, Noob do TV, we will definitely be answering your questions uh, as we go through this. So Bindya, do you want to start off with uh, the presentation that you had for us? So Bindya has got a demo of synthetic monitoring with Dynatrace, um, and she'll talk us through some best practices uh, of uh, synthetic monitoring as well. Yeah, OK. Let's let's get started. So uh, thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for joining in this session. And uh, I am here to share some of my knowledge with you and uh, some of the best practices which uh, we follow. So uh, this session is about proactive insights using Dynatrace synthetic monitoring. So does anyone know what is this synthetic monitoring? What synthetic monitoring is? Anyone from audience? Do you know that? That's a great question. I sometimes feel like I kind of know it, but then when I'm trying to explain, I'm like, hmm, do I know it or maybe not? <laughs> maybe I, do. I don't. Maybe if you could walk us through. <laughs> yeah, let me explain. So what is synthetic monitoring? So it's it's an active approach of monitoring the websites or the web service or whatever your application to understand the performance, the availability and functionality. So like you say, like every any e-commerce sites, they will be having the websites opening in and there will be customers coming into those websites and they would be doing the purchases and all. But everybody, every company or every brand want to have a good brand value and they want to have the availability and all those things. So synthetic monitoring actually helps us to test the availability performance and throughput and functionality of our website using a bot or a, a remote user. So it, it can actually do what a customer experience is like. So that's what synthetic monitoring is. Uh, like it can actually, it's a proactive method or approach of performance monitoring. And it can actually use as, uh, it, it is actually helpful to, for understanding the impact on real users whenever they, are accessing the website. So that is what synthetic monitoring is. So uh, why we need uh, synthetic monitoring? That would be the another question. So so let's let's uh, like well, yeah. Before that, let's say see about what are the types of synthetic monitoring in Dynatrace. So in our company, we are actually using Dynatrace as one of the tools uh, to uh, monitor our websites and experience monitor the customer experience. So there are three, three different kinds of synthetic monitoring. That is single URL monitor, browser click path, and API monitoring. What is this single URL monitor? That means that you can give the URL of your website, and you can monitor those the websites, how the website performs, whether it, uh, it's, it's within the threshold or the, how the availability looks like. And the browser click path means we can actually recreate the user journey. So someone actually goes into a website, uh, it, they go into orders and do some purchases and check out. So we can actually try it and test it with a robot or like bot user and that, and we can actually monitor the transaction and workflow that is for browser click path. And API monitoring that is for testing the APIs or health check endpoints, which, uh, which your application exposes. So, Bindya, that browser click path, I, I can see that being really useful with uh, potentially product uh, users uh, wanting yeah. to know, you know, where, like, say, for example, it's a shopping website, knowing when somebody abandons a website, they could potentially use the browser click paths to be able to monitor that kind of a workflow to see how um, that's performing. Like, is there any friction there to, you know, impact those journeys? Is that is that right? Yeah, that that's right your understanding is correct so i would just uh, like to tell you like imagine you have a shopping website and we can actually say like as a user i'm going i'm launching the website i'm going into these urls like you have different subset like sub pages would be there and you will be finally choosing the product and going into your cart and check out that that's that's something which we can actually use a bot user to go through this 
complete journey. So you can see how each of these uh, transactions or the performance looks like. And it, we can monitor all those using this bot. So it, it would be kind of uh, mirroring the user journey from our environment. Yeah. yeah thank That's you. very interesting. I want to ask the audience if anyone using a synthetic monitoring in their application at work, because I I think they, this kind of data is, is super useful. Whether you have you know existing application or you deploy a new features or new launches, um, you can capture the or simulate the user journey. So uh, let us know in the chat if you are using any synthetic monitoring or if or if you have any interesting approach to that. Uh, we would love to hear. Yeah. And also, just to maybe answer Noob to TV's question, uh, whether to choose why to why choose Dynatrace over CloudWatch or CloudWatch over Dynatrace, um, I, I think it really comes down to what are your requirements. So start working backwards from where your what your requirements are, and once you have the requirements, then you work through the uh, assessment of the tools. So don't start with the tools. You start with, well, you know, uh, you you have a you know outside in approach. You start with what you want to pro uh, what you want to provide to your users, what your requirements are, and then assess the tools, and then go and choose the tool that matches your requirements as much. So you'll consider uh, the different aspects, right? The features that it offers, the ease of use, the cost. As there's many different uh, many different. Um, uh, th uh, verticals to choosing a tool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Dynatrace is an a is a cloud AWS partner. So we don't say use this over this, but it is really work, work backwards from what your requirements really are. Both have features to do synthetic monitoring. Uh, some may shine in some areas, and the other may not. So really work from where what features you really look at, you want to get. So it's looking at the different aspects. That's a great answer, Jody. I love it. It's just the solutions architect answers to customer question at work. I love it. Hope that helps. No, do TV. Hope that helps. Yeah, let us know. Cool. Over to you, Bindya. Sorry for taking your time. Yeah, no, that's okay. So that's something which we are also focusing on, like starting everything from customer journey or like customer experience. And we need to actually base everything based on the customer experience and how the customer, what's the benefit the customer gets uh, if we have different tools. Tools is just helping us to do the thing. So it's all, that's uh, what we are following in our team as well. Yeah. So let's see why we actually need synthetic monitoring. So as I said earlier, uh, so for every brand or every organization, the main thing is like productivity, revenue, and the reputation of the brand. So synthetic monitoring, that's a uh, feature which can actually help us to keep all those things uh, intact or like we can uh, adhere to what we actually trying to sell or trying to uh, work with customer or what we want to give the customer. So synthetic monitoring actually helps us to identify the issues proactively by doing the test or like we will be able to identify the bottlenecks uh, where with the websites and we we are actually having that we can use it as a 24 by 7 monitoring where we we don't have to have a person sit and monitoring your websites or applications um every time so synthetic synthetic monitoring can do that even outside of business hours uh, we will be able to get the alerts and we will be able to monitor the things and by using the synthetic monitoring we can actually ben benchmark the performance of our website and we can actually baseline and we can make improvements based on the recommendations or the uh, recommendations we get from the synthetic monitoring. Uh, as I said earlier, it is actually mimicking what the real user behavior looks like that we can actually uh, mimic what the user does. And we can have it from enabled from different global regions so that we can have a outlook how it how a website looks from different regions of Earth, the globe. So with that global thing in there that you just mentioned, can you give me an example of where that's useful? Like, can you have from, from your experience? Yeah. yeah, so for any of, uh, any of the brand who want to be global, like say, for example, uh, Amazon, that's a global brand, right? So uh, this 
services which is being used by Amazon is uh, available around the globe. So having synthetic monitoring from multiple locations, we can actually identify the performance or how the availability looks from different parts of the world. So it might be a case where the Amazon or the website would be available for particular region like say for asia pacific it's available but for the europe it might be having some problems or troubleshooting or uh, latency issues and all those things we will be able to proactively understand and we can narrow down to the region why it's issues or whether it's a global issue or a restricted local issue so that's how the synthetic monitoring global perspective works awesome thanks for that So some of the best practices we actually need to uh, follow to get most out of this uh, synthetic monitoring. So as I said, like we need to have it fr done from multiple locations so that, so that for a company who, are, who is like global, they need to do it to simulate the tests from different global regions. So they, they will be able to understand how the things are across the globe. And we need to have a regular testing or like regular frequency uh, for testing. So we need to actually find out like what are the best uh, best thing or like most accessed URL or most impacted URLs. So we need to start the testing from there. And we can actually use integrate synthetic monitoring with real user monitoring to get a holistic view how the website uh, behaves that's about uh, best practices so i just have the steps described it how we can actually send that uh, set up synthetic monitoring in dynatrace so i can sh uh, i will be showing it is in the demo awesome so, let's go to the demo i can't wait yeah let's let's go to the demo just give me a minute it's all right. While you do that, I guess I'll just probably talk through when you would use synthetic monitoring versus why you need both real user monitoring as well as synthetic monitoring. Uh, so I think it's more from the perspective that generally real user monitoring is quite noisy because you're, you're, it's actually the real user journeys. And so you want to focus on one that you want to improve. Uh, like as I gave an example of the friction point of say um, on our e-commerce website, somebody is probably... Um, no longer they like they, they are abandoning the cart and you want to understand why that is the case and and uh, uh, real user monitoring is quite noisy from that perspective because there's a lot <clears> more <throat> metrics coming in from good users bad users and everything so you can then use synthetic monitoring to to simulate what that journey may look like and focus on just improving that workflow um to see what that would look like so you need it, it, it's not either or it's generally recommended to use both in conjunction I think that's a great, um, great explanation. And I know, like, it's still for me, synthetic monitoring is it's quite a new concept to me as well. Like back in the day, we don't um, the application usually focus on the the general monitoring and observability of the applications, like the hell of the application. Is it running? Is it performing well? Is CPU and memory uh, are in a good state? But this synthetic monitoring concept, it, it makes a whole lot of um, you know. Monitoring the data points uh, make it a lot easier to troubleshoot or understand the customer experience. So uh, I'm glad that um, people are getting a new information on the other on show. Yes. All right, let's go to the demo. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, I'm in Dynatrace. And under the digital experience, we have this option called Synthetic. So let's, let's start creating a synthetic monitoring. So from here, you can actually start. So there are two different options, create a browser monitor and a create HTTP monitor. This HTTP monitor is actually what I mentioned earlier. It, this is, we are using this to monitor the APIs and health check endpoints of the application. So today we are going to see what, how the create browser monitor. So let's create browser monitor. So there are two different ways we can do. Um, it's um it's based on first we will go with the single user monitor so i'm just using google.com as an example here i'm giving the url here and here from here we can actually use what kind of device you want to see here we have multiple options whether you want to have the image or access uh, the thing from 
phone or whatever thing or like macbook or desktop so here i'm just using macbook pro so it will be like simulating the thing from macbook pro and and just click on the next so here we can actually select the frequency how frequent you want to monitor your website or the test your website so i'm just you think that five minutes as the frequency and down here we can we have we are having multiple locations so i'm just randomly selecting some location um and click next and here you can see what url we are monitoring what type of monitor it is and <clears throat> which device profile we are using and what's the frequency uh, from how many locations we are using and all those like how how much it would consume and all those details and click on create monitor so it will normally take 10 to 15 minutes to set up this monitor so i have something already set up here so so that we don't have to waste our time so here here you can see it's the same monitor for google website here you can see how the availability looks like it's 100 percentage for the last two hours and you here you have the option to change it like how what the interval you want uh, we can change it to six hours or like and see how the performance looks like here we will get all those information like what kind of and you can see uh the details of what all things it is measuring how much duration it is taking for loading this page and how the speed looks like and what are the user interaction duration and most of the details uh, like what device profile yeah this is about a simple user monitor what this does is like just go go and pull this google.com url and see how the website availability looks like and how the that single url performance looks like so next one let's go again to synthetic monitoring and see the next one again it's a under coming under the browser monitor only so here I'm giving AWS. Amazon.com and using the desktop and record click path. This is what we what we are trying to do is uh, to mirror the user journey when a customer web, uh, visits the Amazon website. So record click path that it actually has an add-on. Uh, if you are using it for the first time, you need to uh, download an add-on and install it in your website. I have it already in my uh, laptop, so it's, it's like just popping into this Amazon website. So I'm just uh, trying to see how the orders look. I just went here and it is uh, redirecting me into that sign-in page. So I'm just closing it. And if you go down and see, you can see it has actually captured what um i have done as that's pretty cool. That's yeah pretty cool that it recorded that that's amazing yeah so it, it what this does is like it will go into all the steps which i have done here so and even if you want to do it again you can record it again here or mm -hmm. if you want to see the playback you can just keep playback and it will show us how it looks like it uh, actually opens the website and it, it is going into orders return orders and it will close it this is something which will happen so it, it this is a playback so i'm just stopping it and clicking on next here again we can select the interval of frequency um, and we can select the locations so i'm just randomly selecting some location so this is yeah. kind of where it would be really use, useful, like as May has put in the chat as well, user experience testing. And to your point earlier from, from earlier yeah. in India, where if yeah, you had one customer from, say, India who was having trouble uh, accessing yeah. Amazon.com or was or let's say that people from India were abandoning their um, Amazon carts, they could yeah. potentially use this as an option to understand, is there a friction in that, ex in that experience? Yeah. Uh, and you would use that. Yeah, so really powerful. Yeah, that's right. And again, we will create this monitor. So I have this setup already done for different locations. So uh, we can go there. So here, this is the synthetic monitoring. I have, if you click here, it is actually doing from Sydney. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. I think there's a lot of information 
um, that you can use to improve the user experience. Like it's, yeah. it's like proactively understanding what does it looks like from the mm -hmm. end user perspective. Um, yeah. Because not everyone is going to click every like twenty four seven and see uh, if the web, uh, website is functioning. So yeah, you you just have someone. Actually, it is like someone sitting somewhere mm. in a globe and they are testing the website. Mm -hmm. So here yeah. you can see. Uh, I have something set up for Amazon.com and it is showing like availability as links. Like from Sydney, it is like 100% available, but from Google site, it's like availability is less. That's, and it, it will be showing all those details here. And you can see exactly what's happening here, how much time it is taking. And it, it and by clicking on the analyze, you can go deeper and understand what exactly the problem is. is like all the informations, like uh, how the page loads and what here it, it is showing some kind of error that HTML element could not be fine. Mm -hmm. like, like this, we will be getting most of the information out of this and we can narrow down the issues like where it is actually occurring. It, from this example, you can see that AWS is actually accessible from this location, but it is having some uh, problem with AWS, uh, like Google in from the Sydney location. So like that, you, you would be able to understand the problem. This is really cool, right? I think that this is something that product owners can use to prioritize, right? When yeah. you know, the backlog mm -hmm. that they have, so it can be, uh, it can it can define the future of the feature uh, roadmap of the product as well as well as even maintenance activities. So it gives the product owners that information and insight into being able to prioritize. Uh, yeah. So it's really 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 powerful uh, to see that. That that's really yeah. cool. And not only that, we can actually use synthetic monitoring. Uh, we can introduce it in the development lifecycle it's, itself, like doing the testing and all. We can see how that test would look like, or uh, mm -hmm. after doing the change, how our website will perform, or what how the new introduced change would look like, and all those things. We can actually performance test uh, before it releasing into the production environment as well. We can use synthetic monitoring there. That's pretty cool. Cool. That can reduce, uh, you know, uh, 2 a.m. calls, you know, when you deploy something <laughs> on Friday. Don't yeah, deploy on Friday. Good. Nobody deploys on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So that that's how uh, synthetic monitoring works. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and there was a question about uh, monitoring data bricks. Um, uh, with these tools. So I do know that Dynatrace does have a plugin to do that. Uh, so you would be able to use the Dynatrace hub for it. And also there is a blog that I've shared with you, May, if you could put it in the chat, uh, which talks about how you can use CloudWatch to monitor the uh, data bricks as well. So yeah, so it will, it will be, you know, look at the uh, what they offer, the ease of use, uh, the cost, the different aspects that you need to. Um, and uh, you know it is it is about trade-offs. So choose the trade-offs that matters most to you, or which kind of you know where it really aligns with your requirements, and choose the right tool based on that. Awesome, amazing. Um, yeah, I think that's just really cool, and uh, I love the Java Open Geo because this is like you you show the example that's real world, it's like on you know Amazon.com or like something that you know everyone have touched on. I, I believe. Uh, um, so uh, in that case, like it makes it easier for me to really understand what does synthetic monitoring could help from the customer and then the product perspective. So that's a that's a great demo. I have to remember that when I do the demo next time. <laughs> actually, uh, for from the Dynatrace side, we can actually have anyone can actually create a trial account and you can try it out. So that's 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 like. That's much easy. You can just go and do it and try it out. Like Absolutely. How this I think um, so, AWS would be having the same kind of feature, like having the trial accounts. Yeah, I just pop in the in the chat. Uh, if anyone wants to dive a little deeper into a Dynas Trace and then understand more about the demos today, um, there is also a link in the chat as well. Awesome, awesome, uh, awesome. Thank you so much, Bindia. That was uh, that was really good. Um, 
if they any question from their or from the audience, this is your last chance. We've got a few or a couple of minutes on the synthetic monitoring. So if you have any question, please pop it in the chat before we uh, wrap up for this week. Um, but Bindia, thank you so much for uh, doing the demo. That's been really interesting. Um, I haven't actually seen a Dynatray, so I learned something new today. And I believe uh, a few people on the chat say they learned something new on the concept of dyna uh, on the synthetic monitoring and also the product itself. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, while we wait uh, and we have a few minutes, I'll probably tell a funny story. So there was this case where um, one of uh, my customers was, um, you know, they focused on inside out monitoring. So they had set up all of their dashboards to monitor their infrastructure, uh, CPU utilization, memory, and everything was looking like perfectly fine. So they thought there's no problem at all. And the DevOps team was very happy. The SRE is happy, the company, but the company is not happy because they aren't getting any traffic on their website. And so then when they had to actually implement synthetic monitoring that's when they came to know that uh, there was no one actually using their website at all so there was something broken in the front end it's only when they you know switched to using synthetic monitoring that they were able to figure out that oh something was no. broken so that was it, it is it is powerful and it has its place um and yeah that was an interesting story where it was like oh everyone thought everything is fine but yeah, that's actually, very interesting it's like, oh yeah, there's there's no issue, there's no alarms in my, you know, cloud watch or observability. Um yes. yeah, probably because nobody can reach the website, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what happened there. Awesome. All right. So we're going to wrap up the show here. Uh, Bindia, thank you so much. Jyoti, thank you. As always, pleasure to host the She Builds Tech Skills. And thank you to everyone who tuned in on the synthetic monitoring. Um, if you haven't happened to know the She Builds, this is a She Builds Tech Skills program. We stream every other Friday uh, on the Twitch channels on the technical topics. So hopefully we will see you next time at this, around the same time. So I hope you all have a great weekend. See you all. See you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.